Last week, I uploaded the how to create this book utilizing items that were normally going into our trash bin. This week, what I would like to do is finish that book with you. I am going to be illustrating how I did the spine embellishment as well as how I bound this as a string journal. So I hope you will join me for the next few minutes to complete this project. My name is Peg and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. Thank you to those of you that have already subscribed and if you have not, I would ask you to please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to let you know when I upload additional content. So this is the booklet that we created last week out of the coffee K-cup coffee box and decorated it with an a onion bag, some coffee filters, some a sugar bag, the inside of the sugar bag, and just some other various things that we would normally discard in our kitchen. The inside was painted utilizing wax paper as the gel press. So I tried to get the cover to be very organic and very easy. I am going to use my gel press to create the beads. First thing I've done is laid down a layer of gold paint and pulled that paint out of the negative spaces on the stencil with the sheet and then pulled the print from the remaining gold paint and what was left on my press. And now I've added some raw umber. I'm going to do the same thing. Use that sheet to pull out the negative images on the stencil. And now right over the top of that first print that we pulled. I'm looking for golds and browns. Now I'm laying down a final color, a little black, to create some strong definition. And I'll call that complete. Let's just do one more gold, pull out the negative images on, or the negative spaces on the stencil, leave that, make your first pull, and of course you're going to get some ghost images. Lay the raw umber down, second stencil of your choice, once again pull out the negative areas or the paint in the negative areas. And now, the sheet you're working on. And the third color, which I use is, I'm going from light to dark on this. <clears throat> Once again, pulling the negative images. And there we go with that final sheet. So I was looking for that darker tone. Let's do it just uh, one more time. And I think that what I have decided to do, that one seemed a little dark, so I added that gold and lightened it up a bit. So I'm happier with that. So there are the two pieces of paper that we will be utilizing. Let's do one more and just clean off the press. I'm spreading the gold over there, a little stencil pulling the negative images out. And laying that sheet of paper down. Some raw umber. Yet another stencil. <clears throat> we'll remove the negative images or the negative spaces for the stencil. Lay this down once again. And there you have it. Let's lighten that one up. I'm using Titan Buff, getting my flower stencil back out, removing the negative spaces. And there is that completed. So now let's clean that plate. I knew that I did this at some point. We'll pull up all of the residue paint and I really liked the way that that came out. 
So now we have all of these sheets that we can work with. And I am going to cut them into triangular pieces. So I'm taking off any white that was left or that outside rim. And I'm just positioning my paper so it creates a triangle. I'm determining how wide I want the bead and moving that side to that, to that increment, and then just drawing it across so that it creates a triangle when you cut. And there you have the pieces cut. I grabbed a toothpick and I'm just going to use that to roll that piece of paper into a bead, a little bit of glue to secure the end, and there you have it. Let's roll one more. Very simple. And there are all the beads created out of that gel press print that we just did. Now, of course, you don't have to use a gel press print. You can, you can create extra prints when you're doing your inside cover with the wax paper. I just forgot to do that. That's why I pulled my gel press out because it was easier for me. And now I'm just cutting some beads that will not have that taper to them. So I'm measuring to an inch. And we'll just create some little inch beads. And they'll be straight. They'll be straight little beads. So we'll roll those up. Once again on that toothpick. Now we have the straight beads and the tapered beads. I'm pulling out some 26 gauge copper wire. I will wrap that wire around my jewelry pliers or something circular. You can use a toothpick, you can use a skewer, anything circular. And I'm just taking a twist to create that hoop or that round closure, if you will. Wrapping that wire around, leaving about an inch at the top making that turn in the wire and then wrapping it around itself to make a good strong circular hoop or eyelet at the top of the wire. Once I have that completed, I put some beads on. Now I'm going to take that bead and just wrap a little bit of cheesecloth around the outside of it. We'll glue that cheesecloth into place. And I thought I was going to wrap the wire here, but I've decided we'll do that at the end with the second piece of wire. I'm going to go ahead and just bead the strand. So I'm utilizing some purchase beads as well as the beads that we have made. And I just have a, a plethora, if you will, of, of beads. I have them all sorted by color and they are remnants from back in the days when I beat it a bit. And I pulled out a little silver charm that I have on hand and will end the strand by putting that silver charm at the bottom. And that will complete strand number one. And what I'd like to do is create, or what I have done, is created three strands of these paper beads coupled with just some purchase beads and a charm to hook onto the spine of the book that we have created to decorate that spine or spine embellishment, if you will. So there it is. Dangle number one complete. We'll come back with a little bit of cheesecloth to wrap around the other beads, glue that into place. And now I'm taking a second piece of wire and just twisting that around my entire strand to hold that cheesecloth into place and to just add a second layer of dimension to the strand. 
Now, once you get it into place, you can go back and tighten it by just grabbing a piece of the wire and giving it a little twist. It also makes a nice little decoration or kink in the wire that is attractive to the eye. But from a purpose standpoint, it tightens that wire up around your bead. And there we go with strand number one. I've pulled out the bulldog clip and a little metal gear. And I will take that same wire, attach the bulldog clip or the metal gear to the bulldog clip. And then where that metal gear has those little holes around the outside edge, that's where we'll attach the three str strands of beads. And that will create that bulldog clip with three strands of beads dangling from it. So to get the gear attached, it requires that it's wrapped in that wire. So to decorate that, I'm choosing to pull in some of the smallest beads that I have to kind of fall down the center of that gear. Then we will wrap that wire and create a little hook at the bottom to attach our first strand of beads. There we go. Now, one more bead to unify that strand. Let's grab these pliers, make that twist, put that strand on, grab a hold of that, and twist it into place. Trim off the excess, tighten it up, and there we have the first strand ready to go. And let me show you how I plan on attaching that to the book. So we have the spine. We'll just clip that bulldog clip at the top, and that strand will dangle down the back. So let's add two more strands onto this to create a more robust spine embellishment. So I'm doing the same thing. The only difference here is I am going through that gear or around that gear bottom to attach my other strand. And I'm just starting my strand from there instead of attaching later. So I've made that twist. Going to grab a hold of it and wind it around. And I think I'll just back out of camera frame altogether. We'll wind it around, trim off the excess wire. Now we have that long strand of wire there that will bead with the purchase beads, the paper beads that we made, and we'll add a charm onto the bottom. And after you've done the first one, the number two and number three go pretty fast. Let's add one last bead or charm there at the bottom. That looks about the right length. Let's grab a charm real fast. And now we have something to attach to the bottom. And there we go. And we will just twist that around to hold that in place. We'll go back with the cheesecloth and the extra piece of wire, and we will do that on a third strand as well. Now to get the elastic in, I am punching three holes with my craft pick. Across the top, we'll put three holes in the center and three holes across the bottom because I want three pieces of elastic or three 
signatures, if you will. Although we're making this a string journal, so you can insert as much as you choose. So you can see the three holes here across the top. I will do the same across the center. And once again, lining them up, we'll do the same across the bottom. Now let's work on the string binding. I have just some inexpensive elastic that I picked up at the craft store. It's just a black elastic string, if you will. You can pick it up in the beading section or in the jewelry section is where I picked this up. I threaded that on a needle. I'm going to go through that center hole, back up through the top hole, and then all the way down to the bottom hole. And that will create our piece of elastic to tuck things under. So now to tie that off, we'll come back up from the outside through that center hole and just get that to a point where you can feel the tension in it and tie that off. See, it's, you can feel the tension and I'm measuring now to determine the width I want of that watercolor paper because now I want to see how that's going to work. I'm measuring the width, just going to trim that watercolor paper up. I know a lot of people say only tear the watercolor paper, but for, for my purposes, I'm going to trim that off so it's good and straight. And we will make enough sheets to test this first little string to make sure that we're doing what we need to do so we don't need to cut it out and start over. So that's why I'm doing this now instead of later. And I'm wanting to get just odds and ends of paper. We'll tuck that in and that will work fine. That's holding that quite securely. So now we can put the other two signatures in. I'm going to trim that, tie that into a square knot and trim that off. And there we have our first place to include the watercolor paper. And my purpose for <clears throat> create, excuse me, the purpose for creating this journal was to have something where I could do a little art journaling where I could pull that piece of paper out, do what I wanted, and then store it inside this book. And I might be storing it to use in collage later. This might be a place where I tuck gel press prints that I find um, some of my better ones that, that I find I want to really protect to utilize in either a collage project or a frame or create something else with those. And I, this just seemed like a good way to store some of those things that, that I really like without trying to, you know, hang them all around my, my studio. My studio has slanted walls because I'm in the second floor of our three car garage. So I don't really have a lot of straight walls to display or hang any of the things that I do. And there is that final third signature. And we will trim that up. Add our little clip to decorate that spine. And we'll fill it with paper. And that pretty much completes this project. So just to quickly recap, we created this book out of things that we normally would have tossed from, from our kitchen, uh, coffee filters, onion skin, onion bags, the sugar folder or the sugar bag, etc. We created our own beads out of paper 
to adorn or embellish the spine. And we utilize this as a string journal to house watercolor paper that we can use in other projects as, and save those projects. Once again, my name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I'm so grateful for those of you that have subscribed to my channel. Your likes, your comments, and your shares really do benefit me, and I appreciate you doing that for me. I have listed another video here that I think you will enjoy. So once again, thanks for stopping by, and I shall just say bye for now.